an awful lot of people wondered what would happen when Daimler swallowed Chrysler. Well, wonder no more because on this edition of Test Drive, we take a look at the very first product of that merger. This is the all new Chrysler Crossfire. The Chrysler Crossfire was developed in just 24 months. A year after the idea was hatched, the concept version of the car was revealed at the 2001 North American International Auto Show in Detroit. Another year later, well, the wraps were pulled off the production vehicle. Now that time frame is short, and it is so for good reason. You know, this new Crossfire represents a win-win situation for both Daimler and Chrysler, because beneath the skin, this car is nothing more than a fixed roof Mercedes-Benz SLK. Now you might say, hold on a sec, how can it be win-win? Very simply, the Mercedes-Benz SLK is about to be replaced and so all of its engineering, well, it would have been put out to pasture. Now what they do is they lend it to Chrysler. Chrysler then end up with a crossfire and a wonderful sports car. Mercedes-Benz, on the other hand, well, they get another five, six or seven years out of a platform that would have been put to waste. Where the Crossfire betters its donor is in the body structural rigidity. The fixed roof makes for a much tighter platform and a healthy place for the suspension to hang its hat. As you might expect, most, if not all, of the mechanicals came from the Merck side of Daimler Chrysler. In the suspension's case, this means a double wishbone design up front, a five-link system in back and anti-roll bars at both ends. Through the pylons, the Crossfire remained flat and unflustered, with both body roll and understeer being benign. The crisp turn-in afforded by the steering and meaty 225-40ZR18 front and 255-35ZR19 rear tyres really do help the cause. Bonus marks for the suspension, however, as there's enough compliance built in, so the ride is actually pretty good. Climb behind the wheel of the Crossfire and, well, you'll find everything you expect to find in a $50,000 sports car. To begin with, the seats are fabulous. They keep you planted when you're hearing round the corner, but don't feel confining when you're cruising down the highway. You also get a great radio, effective climate controls and a great set of gauges. That, however, is not to say everything is hunky-dory. To begin with, you get telescopic steering, but no tilt. Now, if you happen to sit tall in the saddle and have short legs, as I do, it chops the top of the dials off. The other thing, and this really is a joke. Ladies and gentlemen, the coffee cup holder. A stout 3.2 litre engine that pumps out 215 horsepower and 229 pounds feet of torque drives the rear wheels. The response to throttle input is surprisingly swift but more importantly, it manages to sustain that impression well beyond legal speed limits. The strong feel is helped enormously by the five-speed automatic and its manual mode. For those into serious driving, the six-speed manual box is the better choice, as the gate is nicely defined and the clutch is both light and progressive. You know, the single biggest drawback with this Crossfire is the view through the rear view mirror. It's non-existent with the spoiler down, with the spoiler up, well, it shaves about 30% off the view. Thankfully, the side view mirrors, well, these things are large enough and well enough placed that you actually get a decent view to the rear. Now, the need for this spoiler is an important one. At moderate speeds, it puts about 40 pounds of downforce onto the back end, which improves stability. If you really start honking along a main road, well, it adds up to about 150 pounds feet of force. So in spite of what it does to the view through the rear view mirror, it's a must. Stopping power comes from four wheel disc brakes and an excellent anti-lock system. The pedal feel is crisp and the stop short and fade free. The system also functions to provide traction control and a good dynamic stability control package. Whenever you cross the traction threshold, the system backs off the power and breaks one or more of the wheels to bring the car back into line. It really does reinforce the car's overall balance as it hardly ever comes into play. Daimler Chrysler suggests the crossfire is what happens when Route 66 and the Autobahn collide. Regardless of how you want to couch it, what makes or breaks a car is the engineering beneath the sheet metal. In the SLK, it worked very well. In the Crossfire, well, it makes for one sweet set of wheels. <laughs>